بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have to feel to continue our study of Aqaidul Imamiyya and we have two items from the section on Al Ilahiyat, on knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is Aqidatuna fil Bada. Bada is from Bada Yabdu. It is not from Bada Ayabda'u. Bada, Bada Ayabda'u means to begin, to start. Bada Yabdu means to appear. It means Zuhur. In Arabic, when Bada is used for uh, human beings, which is the you know, original meaning of this term, it is used when someone makes a decision and then changes his mind. Maybe he receives some other information, maybe he finds his reasons were not good enough for doing that. In any case, he changes his mind, he makes another decision. So, for example, it is said that so and so was planning to go to this place to make this trip, then Bada Lahu and La Yathabna, for example. Then it appeared to him, it became clear for him not to go. It is obvious that in this sense, Bada is not applicable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah's knowledge is absolute and He never lacks some information so that He makes a decision and later He comes to know more about it or He comes to know that some of those things were not facts. So he has to revise. He doesn't need to revise for the same thing. If Allah ever revises something, it's when the parameters have changed. Otherwise, for the same thing, he doesn't revise. But in the hadith that we have, sometimes bada is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is quoted as saying Man za'ama uh, uh, Sorry, first let me say uh, uh, the other one and then I come back to this. For example, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said Ma bada lillah fi shay kama bada lahu fi Ismail ibni Ma bada lillah fi shay. Bada has not happened to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything in the way that it happened to him in the case of my son Ismail. You see, in this hadith, bada is attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this? Ismail was the eldest son of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He was older than Imam Kazim alayhi salam and was a very good person, very pious person. And some people who were not very familiar with the teachings of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and had some superficial knowledge, they thought that Ismail is going to succeed Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Those who had knowledge from the time of the Prophet, they knew the 12 Imams and they knew that 
after Imam Sadiq would be Imam Kazim alayhi salam. But many people didn't have that information and there was no reason also in my opinion to make this very clear who is the next Imam. It could be a kind of cover and protection. There was no need to declare everyone uh, when Imam is alive that who is going to be his successor because enemies could have planned to kill him. So many people thought Ismail would be the next Imam. Even as you know, Ismaili uh, community, they started as Ismaili and they split in that time because they believed in Imam Sadiq and they believed that after Imam Sadiq Ismail was Imam. And the question is, Ismail died before? They said, no, he is alive. He was alive and he was the Imam. So still they insist on the idea that Ismail was going to be the Imam. On the other hand, Ahlul Bayt themselves, and in particular, because this hadith was from Imam Sadiq, we can quote from Imam Sadiq, he himself says that no one should think that Allah has bada in the sense that he regrets about his decisions, or for example, he makes a decision and then he comes to know something else. Imam Sadiq clearly refuted this. So now we have to understand there is something deeper here because what is on the surface obvious no one believes that you know Allah changes his mind Allah has to correct his decision no so what does it mean this means that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a kind of impression by bringing something to the tongue of the Prophet or successors of the Prophet or making things in the way that people get the impression that something is going to happen. But in his knowledge, in his eternal knowledge, he knows what is going to happen. But for some reason, for a period of time, he wants people to get that impression. There can be a matter of testing people, there can be different things. For example, Prophet Ibrahim salam, saw in his dreams, not just once, that he's going to slaughter his son Ismail. Ya Bunayya, anni ara fil maname anni azbahuk. It seems very clear. My dear son, truly I see in my dream that I am slaughtering you. He was sure and you know the dreams of the prophets cannot be false and Ismail alayhi salam also said ya abat fa'al ma tu'mar satajiduni insha'allahu min as-sabirin my father please do what you are asked to do what you are commanded to do so Ismail also understood that this was a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when Ibrahim and actually also Ismail both showed their submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ransomed Ismail with a sacrifice. فَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ 
So, in the end, that dream didn't materialize. But that dream also was not a false dream. That was a kind of impression that Allah gave to Ibrahim and Ismail in order to test them. And when they proved their submission, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that uh, caption, that you know, sheep to uh, ransom Ismail. We have discussed this uh, in Aqaid in several places under the ayah Yamhullahu ma yasha'u wa yuthbit wa indahu ummul kitab and the late Sheikh Muzaffar also refers to this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he puts there in the tablets of Mahwa Ithbat something and erases. Sometimes he puts, sometimes he erases. But there is another tablet, another law, which is Lohe Mahfud, that we call it Ummul Kitab, which is the final record of the f events and incident. That's not going to change. But in the lower tablets, things are there and can be conditional. They are not false, but they are things that can change with du'a, with saliya rahim, with different things. So, when Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, ma bada, let me read again the exact text, ma bada lillahi fi shay, kama bada lahu fi Ismail ibni, what does it mean? It means that something from Allah became clear for people in the case of Ismail, the son of Imam Sadiq, that was not expected by many people. And this surprise was greater than other surprises that people had about Allah's decision. because. Many indicators would refer to Ismail, and perhaps that was a there was a wisdom that people should think in that way, and there was a test also. If you want to have a better idea of Bada, this sentence may also help you, and he makes this point, but I am making it more kind of bold. Ulama say al bada'u fi takwin kan nasakh fi tashri' In the same way that in legislation we have nasakh we have abrogation What is abrogation Abrogation is that there is a ruling and this ruling is abrogated by the next ruling either because of the change of Sharia or even inside the same Sharia. Actually, even inside the Quran, we have Nasikh and Mansukh. Sometimes there was a ruling and people thought this is a permanent ruling. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then brought the permanent ruling. One example is that, for example, in the months of Ramadan, married couples were first asked not to have marital relations even in the night then this changed and Allah said al -ana -hun. or for example there was a time that they had to send uh, they have to give a sadaqah before whispering before doing najwa with the prophet then that was abrogated so or there was a time that Muslims were not given permission even to defend themselves 
then the defense was permitted أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلْمُ So, people thought that is a permanent ruling, but Allah changed it. Actually, if you read the verses about those rulings, normally there is an indication that it may change. For example, حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِ Something like this is normally there. Bada is in takviniyat. Bada is about things, events that are going to happen and they may not happen. Nasr is about legislation, about the rulings. Okay, now let's see the text of Ayatollah Muzaffar, Sheikh Muzaffar Rahmatullah. Al Bada of Al Insan and Yabdu Lahu. رَعْيٌ فِي الشَّيْءِ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ ذَلِكَ الرَّعِي سَابِقًا Bada means that for I mean Bada for human beings is that for him an opinion appears that he didn't have that opinion before a new thing emerges بَأَنْ يَتَبَدَّلَ عَزْمُهُ فِي الْعَمَلِ الَّذِي كَانَ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَسْنَعَ and that is by change in his decision for doing something that he was willing to do, but now he has changed his mind and he's not going to do it anymore. Because something happens that changes his opinion and changes his knowledge about that issue. So basically, first his knowledge changes and then his opinion changes. فَيَبْدُوا لَهُ تَرْكُهُ So it then appears to him that he should leave it بَعْدًا كَانَ يُرِيدُ فِعْلًا After he was willing to do it. Why? وَذَلِكَ عَنْ جَهْلٍ بِالْمَصَالِحِ Because he didn't know the interests, real interests are on the other side. He thought it, they are in this side, then he made the decision to do it, then he realized, no, he shouldn't do this, he should go for the other, the other option. And because he regrets about the previous decision. Such meaning, Bada in this sense, is impossible for Allah Because Allah would not change his mind based on change in his knowledge and you know regretting this is a kind of ignorance and this is a kind of deficiency which are impossible don't believe in this kind of bada so if there are people who condemn shia for believing in bada because bada means allah is ignorant or allah regrets they should know that Imamiyah do not believe in Bada in this sense and they reject even our Imams in that time they rejected this. قال الصادق عليه السلام من زعم أن الله تعالى بدا له في شيء بدا أن دامة فهو عندنا كافر بالله العظيم إن كمال الدين وتمام النعمة by Sheikh Sadduq if you remember in the middle of Sha'ban I introduced this book to you and how Sheikh Sadduq uh, decided to compile this book after actually a dream and after seeing some problems. So whoever Imam Sadaq says in this hadith is quoted by Sheikh Sadduq in Kamaluddin. Whoever believes, whoever thinks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appeared from him something, a change of mind has appeared, happened to him as a kind of regret. In our opinion, this person is kafirun billah. This person is, does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Azim, the Allah the Almighty, Allah the Great, because this means Allah is na'udhu billah, ignorant. Also Imam Sadiq said, Man dha'ama anna Allah bada lahu fi shay'an wa lam ya'lamhu ams fa'abra'u min or fabra'a min, both can be. Whoever believes that Allah 
a new decision happened to him and he didn't know yesterday, I distance myself from such people. I disassociate myself or you do. It can be abra'u or fabra. I distance myself or you distance yourself from such people. غير but however أنه وردت أن أئمة الأطهار روايات توهم القول بصحة البداء بالمعنى المتقدم we have hadith from our imams that توهم it suggests it brings to the mind or it may bring to the mind that we believe in Bada in the sense that we reject it. Kama Varada an Sadiq alayhi salam. For example, it has been narrated from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Ma Bada lillah fi shay, Kama Bada lahu fi Ismail ibni. No Bada has happened for Allah about anything as happened to, for him in the case of my son Ismail. وَلِذَلِكَ النَّسَبَ بَعْضُ الْمُؤَلِّفِينَ فِي الْفِرَقِ الْإِسْلَامِيَّةِ إِلَى الطَّائِفَةِ الْإِمَامِيَّةِ الْقَوْلَ بِالْبَدَى And this is why some of the writers of the books on Islamic sects and denominations, some of these writers have attributed to the Shia the opinion of Bada. They said, Bada means this, that God is changing his opinion, he's regretting about his previous decision, and the Shia believe in this. Ta'anan fil madhab wa tariq al bayt because they wanted to attack this school of Islam. Wa ja'alu zalika min jumlata tashni'at ala Shia, and they made this. Uh, one of the things by which they try to dishonor Shia and attack Shia. Maybe some of them didn't know, but, but maybe some of them also actually wanted to look for excuses to attack the Shia. Was sahihu fi dhalik an naghul kama qala Allah ta'ala fi muhkam kitab al-majid. What is right and correct to say what Allah says in this ayah? What do you say about this ayah? We say the same thing. For us, Bada is the same as this ayah. I mean, the same thing that this ayah is saying. Yamhullahu ma yasha wa yuthbit wa indahu ummul kitab. Mahv means to wipe out, to erase. Yuthbit means to register. So Allah sometimes erases and wipes out, sometimes registers. But he has also the mother of the book, the preserved tablet. وَمَا أَنَظَلِكْ أَنَّهُ تَعَالَى So the whole idea of Bada becomes this. أَنَّهُ تَعَالَى قَدْ يُظْهِرُ شَيْئًا عَلَى لِسَانِ النَّبِيِّهِ Sometimes Allah declares something on the tongue of his prophet. You remember we referred to the story of Prophet Isa, for example, talking about a uh, you know married couple that in you know after their wedding there was a problem going to happen, and Prophet Isa indicate uh, you know referred to that, but that didn't happen. Or Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was with some of his companions, a person was going outside city to collect some wood, and the Prophet said that. Uh, he is going, for example, to be to die or to be beaten. Uh, I think he didn't be beaten. Said, so, you know, he's going to die, something like this. And then they saw him coming back. Rasulullah, when companions were surprised, so said, "Open the bag." And then there was a snake. And Rasulullah said, "What did you do?" He said, "I give, gave sadaqa." So it was not wrong. He was going to be. Uh, beaten by that snake, but Sadaqa changed the situation. It's not that 
uh, it was wrong. It was something which was going to happen, but was not finalized. And the reason for that was to give a beautiful, practical teaching about sadaqah. That how someone that was going to die and people expected him to die, didn't die because of sadaqah, because of charity. So sometimes, يُظْهِرُ شَيْءً عَلَى لِسَانَ النَّبِيَّهِ أَوْ وَلِيَّهِ He makes something clear on the tongue of his prophet or his wali, his friend, or someone who has wali on his behalf from him. Or the overall conditions suggest this. There must be, of course, an interest that uh, requires that kind of uh, giving of impression. But then what happens is something other than what appeared first. Although Allah knew that this is second is going to happen. He had knowledge from before. Kama fi qissat Ismail lamma ra'ahu abu lamma ra abu Ibrahim and hu yazbahu. Like the case of Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail. That Ibrahim alayhi salam ra'a ra'a means ra'a in uh, dream. Because ru'ya sometimes means seeing by eyes, sometimes means seeing in dream, and sometimes means to have an opinion. Ra'ay. So, ya bunayya inni ara fil manami anni Allah. So he saw in his dream that is slaughtering Ismail. Fayakunu ma'ana qawl al Imam alayhi salam. So the, mean, the meaning of what Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said about. Uh, case of his son Ismail, the meaning would be this. أَنَّهُ مَا ظَهَرَ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ أَمْرٌ فِي شَيْءٍ كَمَا ظَهَرَ لَهُ فِي إِسْمَاعِيلِ وَلْدَ Nothing emerged from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in, you know, barakat you can say, uh, so surprising like what appeared from him in the case of Ismail, the son of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Allah took his life before Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. الناس أنه ليس بإمام. So that people know that he is not Imam. If he had lived after Imam Sadiq also, then it would be very difficult. <laughs> Imagine, even when he died before Imam Sadiq passed away, still some people think that he is the next Imam. If he had stayed longer, what would have happened? And No prophet had said he would be Imam. No wali of Allah said that. But Zahirul Hal. You remember the third thing was Ofi Zahirul Hal. Zahirul Hal means the situation was giving this in impression. <coughs> this is what you could, you know collect from the condition, the circumstances. Because he was the greatest or the eldest son of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. وَقَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْبَدَى فِي هَذَا الْمَعْنَى نَسْخُ أَحْكَامِ الشَّرَائِ السَّابِقَةِ بِشَرِيَةِ النَّبِيِّنَا صلى الله عليه وسلم. Similar to Bada in this sense, in the right sense about Allah, is abrogation of the rulings of, of previous shara'i, previous codes of law before Islam, or بَلْ نَسْخُ بَعْدِ الْأَحْكَامِ نَبِيُّنَا or even abrogation of some of the rulings that our own Prophet brought, as I gave you examples. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, the discussion about Bada finished. Now, do we have many questions, Brother Hussain? Yes, we do have questions, but not specifically related to this topic yet. So, if you want to continue on to the next, okay. Okay. Or 
we can ask questions from a previous night. Okay. So if we can finish this one would be great because then we go to the section about Nubuwa. Number 12, Aqeedatuna fi ahkam al din Alhamdulillah, we already talked about ijtihad, about mujtahid, about taklif. This would be a very good uh, supplement to those discussions. What is our belief about rulings of religion? And we mean by ruling, practical rulings. نعتقد أنه تعالى جعل أحكامه من الواجبات والمحرمات وغيرهما تبقا لمصالح العباد في نفس أفعاله We believe that Allah has made rulings which are five أحكام خمسة for example and also we have أحكام وزئية Some of you might have uh, followed the lessons on أصول الفقه we have ahkam taklifiyye and ahkam vaz'iyye. Ahkam taklifiyye are five, ahkam khamsa. Wujub, kiraha, ibaha, sorry, wujub, istihbab, ibaha, kiraha, khurma. If you want to go by order, wujub, under wujub, istihbab, then ibaha, then kiraha, then khurma. There is no voluntary action. There is nothing for which we are responsible. Either it is one of these five. Anything that you are going to do or to say, everything either is wajib or mustahab or mubah or makruf or haram. We have also ahkam vaz'i, which uh, we call it situational rulings, like tahara, najasa, zawjiya, milkiya, ownership, marriage, ritual cleanliness. These are ahkam vaz'i because they are not directly about our action, but they imply some of our actions. Tahara by itself is not what I have to do or not to do. <laughs> Tahara is a condition for this water, for this clothes, for this place. But then in relation to that, many rulings would apply to me. For example, if it's water which is tahir, I can drink it. I can use it for wuzu. So it's something that would imply some actions. If it is najas, it is haram for me to eat it or to drink it, or it's haram for me to make wuzu with it, or for or it can say my wuzu becomes void. Or for example, I cannot, uh, you know, pour this water in on masjid becomes haram anyway these rulings are all according to the interests of people annahu ta'ala ja'ala ahkamahu tabqan lmasalih al-ibad fi nafs af'alihim allah has made these rulings according to the interests of the people in their actions this is why we say we believe that al ahkam al shar'iyya tabi'atun lil masalih wal mafasid al waqi'iyya this is our idea we say the religious rulings are based on real interests and harms and the way it works is like this fama fihi al maslahatu al mulzima ja'alahu wajiban any action that has so much of interest without which we cannot reach sa'ada, happiness, this becomes wajib. Because it's not that every interest is necessary, but if the interest is something which is necessary, we call it al-maslahatul mulzima, something that is then uh, binding is obligatory because it's so great that if you miss it you will not be able to reach your destination this is watch if there is maslaha but even without that we can reach but for example we cannot reach fast or we cannot reach high levels then it is mustahab still you can reach but it's 
slowing down or limiting your perfection. So this is Musta. If there is a harm which blocks your journey, it's al maslahatul mufavvata. Mufavvata from thought means this mafsada al mafsadatul mufavvata means this harm is so much that removes the possibility of salvation, so it becomes haram. If it is harmful, but it would not totally remove the possibility, it becomes makruh, qayr al mufavvata. And if there is neither interest which is considerable nor harm which is considerable, then it is mubah. So, ma fiha al maslahatu al mulzama ja'alahu wajiban, ma fiha al mafsadatu al baligha, as I said, mufavvata, naha'an, Allah prohibited, wa ma fiha maslahatu al rajaha, this maslah rajaha is better, but not something that if you don't bring it, it would certainly be stopped. Nadabana ila, he recommended us to do it, and the other two which I mentioned. Wahakada fi baqil ahkam. Why he does this? Hada min atlihi wa lutfihi bi ibadah. This is justice because he's not expecting us to lose anything. And also, it's out of his grace and favor, lutf, favor. He guides us in this way. وَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ فِي كُلَّ وَاقِعَةٍ حُكْمٌ For every incident, for every action, there is a ruling. One of these five apply to every action. لَا يَخْلُوا شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْأَشْيَاءِ مِنْ حُكْمٍ وَاقِعِيًّا لِلَّهِ فِي There is nothing that would have no ruling in the knowledge of Allah. Maybe I don't know what is in the knowledge of Allah. Maybe I have doubt. But in the knowledge of Allah, it's either wajib or mustahab or mubah or makru or haram. Even if the path to knowing is blocked. In sadad is a terminology that we use in ilm usul al-fiqh. Say babul in sadad. If we are not able to understand the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is lots of discussion. Uh, are we able to understand? We are not able. For example, those people who don't believe in khabar wahid, then some people say this would lead to insadat. That means we are not then able to discover the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, maybe I don't know what is in the knowledge of Allah, but there is something there definitely. If you remember or you have studied Usul al-Fiqh, you know that we have rulings which help us to understand uh, the, no, what is in the knowledge of Allah. And there are rulings that if we cannot understand what is in the will of God, practically help us. So we have Usul al If there is no ayah, no text, no way to understand what is in the will of God, then I have to do something. So we refer to usul amaliyya, which are four. We have baraat, we have istishab, we have takhir, we have ihtiyat. This is something that in usul al-fiqh, inshallah, you will study. So everything has a ruling in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you don't know. But he would not blame us, he would not punish us if we have no way to know those rulings. Also we say It is qabih. Qabih is opposite to Hassan. Hassan means beautiful, means something which is good and beautiful. Qabih means something which is bad and ugly. It's immoral, it's bad if Allah asks us to do something in which there is mafsada, there is harm. Or Allah prohibits us doing something which has maslaha, which has interest. Why should Allah tell us, for example, take this uh, poison, don't take, for example, this food which is good? Why? غير أن بعض الفرق من المسلمين 
But some Muslim sects, they have said, we don't have any independent understanding of what is good, what is bad, and we just take it from religion. Whatever Allah says do it is good. Whatever he says not to do is bad. He can change his situation. He can say, be honest. He can say, don't be honest. Whatever he says, that is good because we don't have any understanding of ourselves. This is the idea of Ash'arais who believed in Husn Qubhe, Shari means not Aqli, not Zati. فَلَيْسَ فِي نَفْسِ الْأَفْعَالِ مَسَالِهِ أَوْ مَفَاسِدُ أو وَذَاتِيَةِ In the actions themselves, there are no interest or harms which are essential. According to them, be honest or not to be honest, in reality, objectively are the same. Because there is nothing as objectivity in morality. وَلَا حُسْنَ أَوْ قُبْحَ الْذَاتِيَانِ There is no intrinsic goodness and badness, and therefore there is no way for art to discover it. وَهَذَا قَوْلٌ مُخَالِفٌ لِلْذَرُورَةِ الْأَقْلِيَةِ This is an opinion which is in conflict with rational, self-evident idea that we can understand the basics of morality and actually if we don't accept that, we cannot even prove religion. كَمَا أَنَّهُمْ جَوَّزُوا أَنْ يَفْعَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْقَبِيهِ They said, not only Allah can command and prohibit what is قَبِيهِ or fail to ask us to do what is Hassan, he can himself also do something which is Qabi or fail to do something which is Hassan. Jawazu means they thought it is possible. And Yaf Allah Ta'ala Al Qabi. Allah does something which is Qabi, it is immoral. Fayamura Bima Fihil Mafsada. He asked to do something that has harm or prohibits from something which has interest. Yanha Amma Fihil Masla. وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ We said before that this opinion فِيهِمْ مُجَازَفَةٌ عَظِيمًا They are begging the issue. It's very uh, unacceptable position. Why? وَذَلِكَ لِسْتِلْزَامِهِ نِسْبَةَ الْجَحْلِ أَبِ الْعَجْزِ إِلَيْهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Because this would imply to attribute ignorance and lack of power to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Allah should do something bad? Does he, doesn't he know? Doesn't he have power? He's weak. Why he should do something bad? What is right in Aqeedah is to say Allah Allah has no personal interest or benefit in obligating us بالواجبات, to say, you know, do wajibat ونحينا عن فعل ما حرم to say, not to do what he has prohibited. He doesn't gain anything. بل المسلحة والمنفعة ترجع لنا في جميعتك مسلحة مفسدة, interest and harm come to us in all obligations. We are the beneficiary or the loser. وَلَا مَعْنَا لِنَّفْيَ الْمَسَالِهِ وَالْمَفَاسِدِ فِي الْأَفْعَالِ الْمَأْمُورِ بِهَا وَالْمَنْهِيَنْهَا It doesn't make sense to say that Allah commands and prohibits and there is no maslaha or mafsada. He just said do that and they are the same. He could have changed uh, to the 180 degree uh, opposite direction. Instead of saying be honest, said, don't be honest. فَإِنَّهُ تَعَالَى لَا يَأْمُرُ عَبَثًا وَلَا يَنْهَا جُزَافًا Allah would not command in vain. Allah would not prohibit arbitrarily. وَهُوَ الْغَنِيُّ عَنْ عَبَادِهِ He is rich and he doesn't need his servants. مَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رَزْقٍ وَلَا يُطْعْمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ I don't need them to feed me. I don't need them to sustain me. Allah is the sustainer. Allah is the one who has dignity and power. So Alhamdulillah we finished the introduction of the book which was about Wujubun Nazar Fil Usul Al Amaliya and then about Taqlid, Ijtihad, Mujtahid. Then we finished the section on Ilahiyat, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
inshallah tomorrow we will go to the second chapter after introduction and first chapter the second chapter about nobuva and we have very good discussions about nobuva being a favor about miracles about esma fallibility about uh, characteristics of the prophet about previous prophets and their books about islam who is the lawmaker of islam about the quran about how to prove quran and about previous sharia yeah. we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to be always learning and sharing and acting may allah send his blessings to the soul of ayatollah muzaffar and all our scholars and teachers alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Thank you very much, Chef, for a very informative night tonight. May Allah bless you. We have about four minutes for Q uh, and A. Yes. And maybe one question. Uh, the question is: Do we know the logic behind why certain rulings are abrogated, such as, for example, the changing of the Qibla to Mecca? Well, we have some idea, but it can be much more than what we know. But for example, in this case, it seems, I'm not saying this is the only reason, that initially Muslims were asked to pr say prayer towards Jerusalem, Beitul Maqaddas. Uh, and this could be a sign of unity with uh, other uh, religious communities. But unfortunately, some people from those communities instead of appreciating this they try to use this as a kind of uh, means to attack and question muslims say they don't have qibla of their own so instead of this leading to unity it was being a case for division so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then asked the prophet to move to mecca of course from the beginning it was known that this would be going to be the permanent and eternal but this was a chance to see to give an opportunity to those people that if they had acted wisely <laughs> it could have remained the same but it was known that they are not going to do that and also i thought once in medina uh, you know i was talking about masjid al qiblatain I said maybe also one reason is that so that Muslims also would uh, develop a kind of belonging to Beitul Muqaddas, to Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is a very, very important place and many prophets have been there. Our prophet for Mi'raj has gone there. So maybe now Muslims have also some more attachment to Jerusalem as they can say this is our first Qibla. And I think this is also maybe in the long term plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that area is important that Muslims, you know, feel connected to that. It's not only Palestinians, for example, who feel that's their land, uh, which is a sense of geography, which is important, of course. But that land is also a holy land for Muslims as it is for other uh, religious communities. Thank you very much, Chef. You're welcome. Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time for today. So I'll pass it over to Brother Kaidi 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 to recite an excerpt from the Munajat Ibn Abidin Ali. Inshallah.